have the rear axle squared away this installment we're going to build out the rear disc brakes so the kit that I'm working with is actually a four disc brake conversion from Wild Horses uh, and these are the directions that come with it more of a just a diagram and how's it go how it goes together but what I've noticed they give you threes and I, I'm imagining it's a comprehensive kit for all the years so that it fits on the different Ford 9 inch rear ends. Uh, what I found is these have a kind of a part number etched into them, FL9B. These match up with the flange on my Ford 9 inch from um, 1973. So they, those, as I'm sure most are aware, those rear ends have different bearing sizes. I have the large bearing, so the part B is the one that fits on there. Additionally, there's mounting brackets. So I went with the B bracket as well, BR9B. There's A through C, so I'm gonna go with the Bs. Um, we have these caliper mounting brackets, which will go on later. But then there's four sets of shims. You'll use two, um, two shims per side, so that I'm going to have to figure out, and then there's these spacers. I'm going to have to figure out how that's going to go together. That'll just probably be a fitment thing once it's all together. So just to start, I'm going to use the Bs. I'm going to follow these directions by just going through the diagram, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, starting out with our axle tube on this side. This is the left side, and the uh, point of reference is if you're standing behind the car on the left, the driver's side, the pinion, whenever, so this actually will sit, this is, um, as it'll sit in the vehicle, these are the perches here for the leaf springs, so it'll be rotated 90 degrees from where it's at up, and the ring, um, this, this protrusion here where the ring is, it's on the left side, whenever this is on the ground and behind the car, this is the driver side, the left side, so, um, that way you can differentiate which caliper you're using. Those have uh, left and right written into where the um, emergency brake components are. Uh, let's see if I can get it. Right here, there's an L. So it'll tell you which one's left and right. That's important for when you're mocking these calipers up. But um, first thing I'm gonna do is I put a little bit of gear oil in here on this seal just so that it's not dry. And I'm gonna get my axle shaft. And my axle shaft here had the uh, large bearing already pressed on there. It has the um, housing flange on it. Then you put your spacer over top of that. As I had pointed out before, I'm using the B spacers. So I feed this in there. Entice it to go in. There you go. Move it around and then have those teeth catch. Alright. That's in. And then on this axle flange, there's a um, there's a, a mound or a protrusion on the bottom 
of this flange which points downward and it actually has written top on it so the top will go on the same side here as our perch for our leaf springs so let me get my spacer over top of the bearing so it's going to go in here like this push in my axle and all right the axle is in all right what you want to do is you get your four grade 8 bolts I just had them through there so that I can figure out how this goes but you'll take your mounting bracket and what this does is you have these four bolts that stick out that are going to hold your caliper mounting bracket and then these three interior ones which go on that axle flange plate uh, you want this flat side on the top because that flat side is going to be where you mount it so it's I needed to flip it over like that now what's going to happen is when I put these bolts through there this way it'll hold the bracket over in here so these three will line up with the two on the top and this one bottom so that's this is how this will stay what I need to do now is take my axle flange bolts the T bolts and put those through and I can tighten this down but before you do that you're gonna you're gonna want to have your grade 8 bolts already sticking out so what I'm gonna do is there's a washer that goes on this flat washer bolt flat washer through and then I'm gonna worry about my spacer and uh, sleeves all right I have my washers through on this backing plate and then I get my T bolts here what I'm gonna do with these I'm gonna set this plate down here for the time being I've been putting anti-seize on a lot of these components since it is a brake component and if I do need to get it back off in the future this is going to make it a lot easier just because of the heating and cooling that takes place so I'm going to put a little bit on these threads here on each one and then as I was saying this bolt will come through like this and then this mounting bracket comes over top here as I was saying that flat side of this bracket goes to the top and then we'll sit in here as so so I'm going to get all these bolts in here and then I'll give you a final look all right now that those bolts are in there, those flange bolts are going to hold that plate in there and then the actual mounting plate will come in behind here and sit on those four and tie in through there and then the caliper ends up coming up on to this bracket through the two top holes here, these two that I just moved to the bottom. But what you want to do is sort of do a test fit for everything so that you know whenever you put this back on the ground and you put your shocks in the stock position that everything's going to fit. What I found is I have interference with this bracket. Everything looks good when it's out, you know, nothing's installed, but when I put that shock in there, ever so slightly that boot is getting caught on the emergency brake mechanism so I'm gonna go over here to the other side my trusty shop assistant went ahead me and uh, assembled this side already and what happened was when I put this shock in it comes up through here this way and this part is what is hitting that boot so I'm gonna have to take this mount and move it to the left an inch or an inch and a half so I already went ahead and cut this inside while I had all this off and then I just need to cut this side and then clean it up and weld the new one on. The new one, I have a new setup that came with my shock mounts that I put on the frame. But I just didn't know where these had to go yet. So if you look closely in here, that is already cut as well. But once you figure out what interference you have, then you can move forward and get the rest of this mounted. So let's go ahead and move on to bolting up this backing plate. Alright, so these bolts, the T-bolts, they get tightened through the axle shaft. There's the hole that you'll insert. It's a three-quarter socket, tighten those. 
And then for this mounting plate, these are 9 16 bolts. Uh, it goes bolt, washer, backing plate, the spacer sleeve, then the spacer itself, and then uh, the backing plate will go on next. So make sure that remember that these are the spacers that I chose. This doesn't mean that these are going to be the ones that will work for everything. It's just this works for my application. And so I did a test fit and those are what work best. So I'm going to get this mounting plate on here. washer and then lock nut and you'll tighten these down if once you've done your test fit and then you just install the caliper so let me do my test fit before I run these down the whole way now I'm doing my test fit I have the rotor on here with the backing plate mounted up uh, what I want to point out though, with this new caliper, the piston in here, it screws in and out to change the depth to start out and then as you run this down through its life, it'll start moving out. What I need to do is screw it in more so that I have more pad clearance and I'm going to take my heavy duty spanner, this is actually for a motorcycle uh, clutch tool but I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in, but you wanna keep, there's one that is smaller than the others. You wanna keep that in the 12 o'clock position because that's gonna hold one of the plates in there and there's also a, um, kind of like a spring that goes around here that'll hold that in. I'll show that once I get this twisted. Okay, now that I got that screwed in, this is in the 12 o'clock position here. And this is that clip that I was talking about. So this is going to go in here with the um, high side out so that it can hold the pad in here. And there's a, there's a collar that this will go around. All right, I got the first pad in, the other one. That's situated. And now I can go ahead and do my test fit. Well, I'll tell you, it'll probably work, so that's good. You take your pins here, run those through so that your first brake pad has that perch to sit on, and get my second one in. Yeah, it looks like that's going to work. So, um, what I did on the other side is I had everything tightened down for that test fit, but I figured if I did it one side and I replicate on the other, it would probably be pretty close. So, that's why I'm not, you know, tightening all this stuff. So, I'm going to get this off here, run all these bolts down, tighten them up, um, and then come back to the finished product. All right. So, I have the rotor held on there with the lug nuts and I just put two wrenches in there to hold that rotor in place. As you can see there's the final assembly for the backing plate. Um, as I mentioned prior to this I am going to have to cut off this mounting bracket and move it over so I'm going to do that once it's all assembled and I can put it on the frame to know where exactly it has to go. But now I'm going to get the caliper on here and call it good. Another success 
for Project Break Horse. What she said. <laughs>